on the set. Rolling and action. The king of the kitchen, the roller of recipes, the prince of potatoes and of the veggie table. Here's Scott. My name is Heinz Stein. I am a food scientist. I was invited here by Scotch McScotch to work on a recipe, scientifically of course, for chicken thigh meatballs. But I don't know where the kitchen is. And so, using the scientific process of deduction elimination, I have to find the kitchen. So first I'm going to look over there. That's not the kitchen. And then I look over here. Why that's not the kitchen. So then I explore different possibilities. How about this place? No, uh, that's the water closet. <laughs> yeah. So. We will continue our exploration. And looking over this way, no, that's not the kitchen. Then we explore over here. Oh! Hey! Look! This must be the kitchen. Well, we found the kitchen. We're going to start the process, the scientific process, because my name is Hein Stein. That's right, world famous food scientist, Hein Stein. Hello. Well, I think I recognize you from YouTube. You're Harvey. Got any good jokes, Harvey? Yeah, yeah. I I got a good joke. You do? Okay. Start us off with a good joke. Why did the banana go to the hospital? Because it wasn't peeling very well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, scientists like a good joke, too. <laughs> Thank you, Harvey. Get it? Peeling very well. <laughs> well, that was Harvey. He's going to play some music. Harvey, do you have any scientific music? Scientific music? Yeah. Yes, I do. I'm punching in the formula right now. Ready? gather up the ingredients first. Ah, uh, let's see. Stale bread. Oh, we got some stale bread. Yes, we do. Yes, we have some stale bread. And we need some hot milk. We're going to use half and half. We need some wheat bran. Oh, we got some wheat bran. We're going to need a couple of eggs. Of course, we're going to need some chicken thighs. Oh, these are getting expensive nowadays. We're going to need garlic powder, and we're going to need onion powder. I like to use this granulated chicken bouillon. Gives it a good chicken flavor. We have to put in some thyme, some sage, rosemary, white pepper, oregano, paprika. 
You know, this is good stuff. Uh, I bought this in uh, Belgium, I think, or Hungary, someplace when I was in Europe doing scientific studies and some cream of chicken and mushroom soup concentrated and to put a little bit of nice greenery topping on it I'm going to use broccoli florets I'm going to grind up these chicken thighs and before I do that I have to get them pretty cold I don't want to freeze them I want them to be stiff almost like they are frozen but not quite I'm not going to rinse these chicken thighs I'm just going to cut them up into thin slices like this well we have all of this chicken sliced up just the way we want in preparation for the grinder and now we want to put it in the freezer for about 10 or 15 minutes not very long and now while the chicken is getting nice and cold we're going to set up the grinder this grinder attachment has a few complicated parts oh. and it's good that there is a like a a food scientist who can assemble this. That would be me. Einstein. But you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. It just takes Einstein. Okay. Let's see what we're going to do here. We got the plunger. That's okay. Oh, we got this thing. Huh. I think this one goes in there. Oh, we got to push it through. Yeah. Got to push it through. And then probably goes in there. So far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good, I think. So this is the cutter blade, and this one goes on there. Okay, I, I think I'm making progress now. And look, these have two different size holes. We're going to use both of them, one at a time. We're going to start with the one with the big holes. This will be the coarse grind. Then we're going to regrind it with the smaller holes. Well, I just checked the chicken thigh strips and they're starting to get a little firm, but I'm going to give them another five minutes. You know, when the chicken thighs are firm, they will grind up much better. While that chicken is getting firm, I'm going to take some bread and cut it up. This is going to uh, be like a filler. You know, this is a delicious bread. I know, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Scotch made it uh, a couple of days ago, but he uses so uh, a nice mix of flour, uh, white bread flour, then he uses uh, some dark rye flour, and he also uses that wheat bran, and it's, it's so good. I like to use a roll because a roll has a lot more crust than a loaf of bread and it's that crust which really puts it all together. And we really just want to tear this up. Let's go get that chicken. Well, there it is. And now we're going to start the coarse grind. First, we lock it in place. 
and then we plug it in. You have to plug in this mixer because it runs on electricity which uh, I invented a couple of centuries ago. Here it goes. Well, we can turn it off and go to the fine grind now. Before I mess around with it, I want to unplug it. That's a safety measure. The fine grind is now inserted. Okay, so it's uh, it's all ground up and it's looking very good. And now it's time to mix up this chicken meatballs with all the other ingredients. But before I start with that, I'm going to warm up this pan where we're going to cook them. Now, it's not really frying, and it's not really boiling it. It's a combination of olive oil and water. And so it's like a soft, soft boil, because what we want is a soft, soft meatball. We don't want to fry it and put a crust on the... We're just going to softly boil in oil and water. Extra virgin olive oil from Sicily. Okay, so we'll set the olive oil over here. And we're going to pour in some water. that looking good and now we want to turn this on and while that's heating up we want to crack in two eggs there's one and two I want, I want to take a little bit of half and half and Oh, that finishes up. Uh, that's probably good enough. And we'll put this in the microwave. Now at this point we're going to start adding some of our other ingredients. This is wheat bran. Good for digestion. A little bit of garlic salt. We want to add some paprika. Some garlic powder. Some onion powder. Okay, this is starting to uh, Come active, I'm going to turn it down to about 225. This is going to be chicken bouillon, granulated, brings out the flavor of the chicken. A little bit of sage, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of rosemary, tiny bit of oregano. And finally, Maybe it's finally white pepper. And we want this up a little bit. Now, get this egg, all these spices getting nice and mixed up. And you can see this chicken consistency is very loose. We're going to start adding these big chunks of bread. I think we can add all of this bread. I think it's a good move. Good move? That was an awesome move. Did you see the way he put that bread in there? Bread? Yes. Boom. It's in there. We 
have this hot milk. It's folded almost. And it's half and half. Now let's see. Oh, we just put in the rest of the milk because I think the bread needs to be a little bit wetter. And while that bread is absorbing all of the liquid, I'm going to need a bowl of water. I want to ask the audience if you think that uh, scotch would mind, because you know scotch better than I know scotch, if you think that scotch would mind if I had, oh, just 20 drops of scotch. If you think it's okay, let me hear your applause. Here, here. Thank you, scotch. Here, here. After I invented the cyclotron, you know, splitting atoms, all that stuff, neutrons, protons, electrons. I concentrated on the theory of uncertainty. And I discovered that increasing the amount of scotch in a recipe increases the amount of uncertainty in the final product. That's a scientific fact. But I think now that this is getting almost hot enough. This oil and water combination is getting to the right temperature. We want to dip our hands in water and then grab some of this chicken. We want to be very careful These are going to be so soft. So these are boiling nicely. Oil and water at the same temperature cooking up nicely. I just, these are wonderful. Oh, this is smelling delicious. Here's to these meatballs. Here, 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 here. Makes my hair go frizzy. <laughs> so I'm going to use an instant read thermometer because it's important that the chicken be cooked thoroughly. Now the first one we put in is reading about 120. The last one is 118 and we want to get these meatballs up to at least 165 to roughly 185. Uh, let's check some temperatures. 160 Five. One seventy. Two, three, four. One seventy-four. One eighty-one. That one's good. That one's good. Well, I like the way these are looking. You know, this is a great instant read thermometer, and when you're cooking these, you want to make sure that they're done. So I would like to drink to instant read thermometers. Here's to instant read thermometers. Here, 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 here. So now we want to take out some of this oil very carefully. That was dangerous thing dealing with hot oil. You just have to be so careful. 
Let's drink to my success. Here, here. Here, 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 here. Here, 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 here. We're going to make an exquisite sauce. We're going to put in some butter. Harvey, hey, you got any music I can dance to? You do? All right, hit me with a tune. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Go! Okay. Well now, we have got... We have got this butter. Mix it in with the chicken oil and we're going to add some special flour. Now this is called Wondra. <laughs> oh yeah. A little bit of Wondra never hurt you. Okay we're going to stir in some cream of chicken and mushroom concentrated soup. Scotch is so frugal. He bought this can for 59 cents. He called me up when he bought this and he said he bought 10 cans of this soup for 59 cents. How can you go wrong? So now we want to put in this can of chicken, cream of chicken with mushroom stuff. Like I say, this is an experimental recipe. We just got to mix this up, turn the heat down. And now we have to add some chicken broth to that, thin it up a little bit. top off this delicious dish I just made, I am going to have some broccoli florets steamed. Not a whole lot, just to make it look pretty. on there. <sighs> Swallow it down. Spin me around. Here's to swallow it down. Here's to Spin me around. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic salt on there. And I'm also going to add a little bit of black pepper on top of that. I think I figured out the scientific formula for these uh, chicken thigh meatballs. I wish I had time to clean up this kitchen. What's that, Harvey? Oh, don't worry, man, I'll clean it up. Don't worry. I got it. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you, because, uh, you know, I have a lot of work to do back at the laboratory. And if you could clean this up for me, I would be forever thankful. And Harvey, can I tell you a joke? Just a minute. 
Knock, knock. Who's there? Little old lady. Little old lady who? I didn't know you could yodel. Little old lady who? <laughs> Little old lady who? Little old lady who? Get it? Yodel? <laughs> I didn't know you could yodel. Little old lady who? Hey, Harvey, listen, I gotta go. But thank you very much. Thank you very much, man. You're a lifesaver. I'll take my report back to the laboratory and uh, I'll email it over to Scotch so he doesn't screw it up next time he make, tries to make this. You know how he is. You know how he is. Hey, I got to get back to the laboratory so uh, I can file so I can file this report with Scotch. Okay, see you later, man.